Dallas, my man. Pockets looking pretty fat tonight. Any of that for me? It's all for you, Diz. Yo, Julius. It's time for D to pay the bills. It's been too long, Dallas. The 90 day grace period is up. Get up here.
Lisa, you know how you said just like the rest of us that you've been itching to get out of this town, not to worry about money to do it? Yeah. And after seeing Eddie take that fall, and now he's the one that's on the radar forever? I mean, how do you expect any more decent jobs to be pulled without the cops looking at him or us first? That could be me in there next time. Listen, do you remember what Eddie promised Harold when he got out? He promised to make him a solid home in California. And include us if we wanted it. Well, Eddie and I aren't the same anymore. Besides, I've got uh, other prospects. Speaking of which, how's that working out for you? <laughs> Look, all I'm saying is Eddie's good with numbers and shit like that. He knows about all the business stuff. He could set us up a house, a clean business, lots of other things. <laughs> yeah, and uh, where's Eddie now? He's getting out tomorrow. I know you two still love each other. Okay, the truth of it is I lost the money. <laughs> you lost the money? Yeah. He... he depended on you for that loot, and Harold depended on you? What the hell happened, Dallas? I'm stupid, okay? I know this. I just got into some trouble. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it sounds like you're the one that needs to be getting out of this town. Alone. Eddie will be okay. If I make it up to him and Harold, we'll be cool. But I'm gonna need you too. For hell's sake. What do you need me for? Well, for one, you could help me pull another job and make that money back for all of us. You'll come out clean, too. You have my word on it. And Eddie wants to see you. Wait, you, you went to visitation? Wow. They would have locked you up the first sight of you. But you, uh, you saw him? Well, not exactly, but I know he would want to see you. You could soften them up a bit. You know chicks have that effect on certain guys. You know, um, let me just ask you this, okay? Where do you expect all of this to end up? We do the dirty deeds together, we ride off into the sunset as lifelong one criminals too? I don't think so. No thanks. Or, we all do the dirty deeds together and ride off into the sunset, waking up to the sunrise on a beach somewhere. Come on, we just have ourselves now. We need this change, I know you do. Mom and Pops never cared what we did. It's just us now. Come back and see us again real soon. <laughs> so are we really going to the ocean to live? That's the plan, Harold. Is Eddie going to be mad at us for spending all his money? Eddie's not going to know we spent the money, Harold. He's also not going to know we're stiffing old man Haynes for the last three months of rent here either. Besides, when we make the new money back, we put it in your bank account and no one knows about it. I have a bank? Yeah, Eddie never told you? No. We use your name because it's not... It's not a good idea to use his name, you understand? If they find out he has money in the bank, they will take it. So it's kind of like, you're the representative for all our money. Really? Like, I'm the leader? Yeah. Exactly. You're the leader, Harold. It's just that the money is Eddie's to hold for us, except we use your name since you're the leader. Wow. Yeah. So... How long does it take to get to the ocean, Dallas? Damn it, Harold, about five minutes. Are you good with that? Sure, but if we're so close, how come we haven't been there before?
Andy, we're going to see sunrise over the ocean. Whoa, whoa. That's my little brother. Andy, we're going to see sunrise over the ocean. Here we are, Harold. We're going for sure. Everything set? All set. Got your clothes, your ID, even your lucky rock. And everything else? Yeah, about that, Eddie. Don't, don't tell him about the money, Dallas. What's going on, Dallas? Nothing, Eddie. You know Harold. He hears things, you know? Hey, how is it in there these days? That was a break before you got kicked out of the service. What the hell is she doing here? Well, I just thought that since my car only seats two normal people or one of him, that we could use an extra set of wheels. What the hell is going on, Dallas? Hey, Harold, go jump in the truck with Lisa. Take a ride with me, man. Let's catch up, buddy. What's going on, Dallas? Eddie, I tried, man. I tried real hard. I got into some things. Man, I don't think I can see in that town anymore. You got out of there at just the right time, too. Why don't you explain yourself, then? Where do you want me to start? How about you start with the money? Yeah, the money. Yeah, the money. Well, you see, Eddie, I owed the Fritz brothers some money from before, and you know them. They weren't budging. My clutch went out, I had to take care of that with the shop. Just things, man. You know how it goes, right? How much did you spend? No, better yet, how much money do you have right now? About $300. $300. I know, I know, man, I'm sorry. You're sorry. Well, that just makes everything so much easier to get us all 800 miles to Malibu to set ourselves up cleanly, doesn't it? Three hundred dollars, just more than enough. Get up, bitch! Get out! You're such an idiot, man. Really? And you're inflexible. At least I don't look like a faggot. Boy, boy, Come on, children! Come on, come on, guys! I don't want to see my brother and my good friend fighting. We're on our way. Okay, okay, Harold. Okay. Why are you here? I don't know. Why are you here? She's here because of me. Do you like stuff stick? Stop! Are you dense? I brought it here for you and all of us. Neither one of you guys had nothing while you were doing your stretch. Besides, she's willing to help us make that money back. What do you mean, us? Listen. None of us had any parents worth a damn or any stupid family for that matter. We just have ourselves. We are shadows. Back there, we exist out of the light. Now, Eddie, I want to make it up to you, man. I want to let you know that time you did wasn't in vain. Now, Lisa here, she's willing to help us get to California. We have a plan. Oh, hell, here we go. Look, Dallas is right. If we can pull off just a few small things, you'll be good. Besides, Harold deserves this. You'll be good. As it not, we'll be good. So, you're just gonna risk yourself to get back the money he blew. Just go back to that rat hole of the city. That's swell of her, huh, Eddie? Oh yeah, that's real swell of her, Harold. Why are you being so swell? Wow, you really are dense. Don't you see? I'm your Cupid, man. She wasn't getting any love out there. You weren't getting any love behind bars. Or were you? All right, all right, all right. Okay. It's just one problem though. Now what's this redemption plan? Well, the way we figured it, we're 830 miles from Malibu. 
On the way, two and a half hours from here is a town called Bunch. It's near the Grand Canyon below the Utah border. And it looks to be only about 10,000. 10,000 dollars? No, 10,000 people. Yeah, it's perfect. It's a few hours from the nearest city. It's just big enough to have some businesses. Maybe some senile retired people with money. Hell, two or three jobs tops, and we'll be on our way to Utopia. You have an uncomfortable 300 bucks, right, Dallas? Yep. All right, that should be enough to get our cars to, or was it lunch? Lunch. All right, motel, gas, and donuts. Motel, gas, donuts. My watch says it'll take $137.21 to get us to lunch. Lunch. Does that thing even work? Better yet, do you even know how to use that watch, Harold? Joke all you want, guys, but this is the thing of the future. One day it's going to be a computer, phone, watch. That's it. Watch out, guys. Look at this. This is how we're going to do it. Like we used to. This is for you. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, you're all going to be the death of me. Hey, I can help make money too. No! no. Harold! We're gonna check in, <laughs> pretending to be on our honeymoon. Pretending, of course. Anyway, you two stay in the Fiero. Eddie, it's crowded in this little thing. I can't even fit a pillow in here. Not for us to sleep in, dumbass, just while they check us in. Hey, watch your mouth, man, that's my little brother. Anyway, you two wait here, I will tell you when to come to the room.
We're going to wake up every morning with the sun rising over the ocean in California. Just like in the movie, Dallas. Yep. Our ship's coming in, Harold. Yep. Our ship has sailed. Yep. Our ship has sailed. No. Wait, our ship hasn't sailed. That's different than our ship coming in. Never mind. There they are! Shh. There they are! You show direction to me And it's all changed Why do you girls always have to piss so much? Shut up! You really ought to get your prostate checked. Dallas, you're a moron. It's prostate, not prostrate. And by the way, girls don't have a prostate. But what we do have is the natural ability to adapt to the tolerance of morons However, I think I'm losing that instinct as well. Are we ordering pizza? I'm working, Harold. Do you mind? I'm really hungry. Look, your peanut butter's in the bag. Play your games and do us all a favor and just keep the noise down. But I'm still gonna be a little hungry. Lisa, I found a few antique stores and a jewelry shop. Any pizza places? You too. Pizza places carry lots of cash on hand. You know, like delivery drivers and stuff? It's my favorite game. I'm crashing. Yeah. I'll deal with this in the morning. I'm gonna take a shower. Cross little froggy. Damn it! Did a frog jump?
Run and buggy, go. Hop. Hop to the buggy. Why are you here? Last time we spoke, it wasn't with words. I don't hear from you for the last ten months while I'm in that hole. <sighs> Did you want to? It would have been nice. What, were you hanging around with Marshall and his puffs? No. But I could have. He offered me a job, but I didn't take it. I told him that he can get a lockpicker from somewhere else. I just... wanted to be through with all that. Well then, how did this happen? Small timer passing through. Was looking for a distraction and word got around that I was available. Just didn't work out. Obviously not for you. Or for him. He's sleeping in the Satoma River right now. <laughs> hmm. I can't believe you brought this with you. What? They're cute. I like it and it's gonna stay with me. <laughs> and so will I. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, that's my big brother. <laughs> Got it. This pawn shop is just a block down for that bank. Ten to one says this is where they pick up their president. Dallas, you hear me? Lisa, wake up. Okay, listen up. We got about an hour before this pawn shop opens up. I want you two to go check this place out. The guy who used the bank next door will probably walk back and forth. Make sure of no guns. No blood, no noise. No sweat. No nonsense, Dallas. Hey, what do I do? Nothing! Mister, you all right? Yeah, um, I was just, I was just trying to find my old wedding ring and I was planning on selling at this pawn shop here since I'm nearly divorced and single. But uh, I, um, I just didn't want any remembrances of that, that sleaze bag, you know? I see it all the time. Bad memories, fresh starts. Hey, I own this shop. Are you sure you brought it with you? Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty, pretty sure. Do you want a fresh start? Huh? Give her that bag, you're gonna have some bad memories too. Oh well. Looks like I don't need that ring after all.
Don't worry, Papa. You'll be found in time for dinner tonight. You look like you need a few squares anyway. Sugar plums? We need to get back on the road. We have a lot of driving to do if we want to get back to Tulsa by tomorrow night. By the way, lovely town you have here. Don't forget to change your pants, Pops. Sugar plums? What, was that weird for you? Coming from my brother, totally. Okay, honey bunch. Harold, can you find something other than that music video channel? I can't think. But this is my favorite song. And my favorite video. <laughs> Nothing's easier than taking candy from a baby, taking a bank bag from a pawnbroker. Shh, keep it down, will ya? We're clear. Okay, let's see it. All right. How much is this? About 8,000 bucks in two minutes flat. 8,000 yeah. bucks. Yeah, but we're going to need a lot more than that. I know she's right. What's this? Don't worry. That was mine. Alright. <laughs> Harold. Harold. See that right there? That is our ticket to California. That's our ticket to a better life. I'm doing this for you. I'm doing this for all of us. Remember what I said to you? We're going, Harold. We're going for sure. I love you, buddy. I love you too, Eddie. So Jack, you're telling me that a girl and a punk boy just robbed you out here on a normal morning and you didn't even go for your ankle gun? But the guy had a mohawk and tattoos and stuff. He looked like he was right out of the road warrior or something. I didn't expect it. He had one of those knives or guns to my throat and my arms trapped. And the girl, she was real good. She did say we had a lovely town. And the guy mentioned something to her about going to Tulsa. Tulsa? How about you, Jim? Did you see something? Just Jack here, all tied up and crying like a baby. I was not. Was too. I only pissed my pants. You were crying. All right, all right, Jack. I want you to head on over to the station and file a report with Johnny. Oh, and uh, <laughs> be sure to change those britches first, <laughs> all right? <laughs> <laughs> When are we going to start driving again? So this is the plan? No to widow to a local furniture store? Let me see that. What is this, Eddie? Look down further. Read her pitch. She's invested in over half this town. She owns most of the buildings and houses in this place. Says Ruby Goldstein. 
The Goldsteins have been leaders of the Bunch community for more than 60 years. Ruby and her late husband Arthur have acquired many historical homes and buildings in our community, revitalizing the entire business district, retaining Bunch's family-friendly hometown environment. Wow. Mrs. Goldstein's investments in the local area are endeavors close to her heart, and she's always on the lookout for opportunities to grow and better our community. <laughs> so what are we going to do? Go to her house and rob her of the deeds? No. We're going to give her the prettiest looking investment opportunity she's ever seen. First, Lisa and I need to get married. Again. Oh, here we go. Dallas, we need to stay out of sight. I need you to park the Fiara behind the building with Lisa's truck. Am I invited this time? No! no. Now, Joan, I know you can handle yourself and everything, but I've got to ask you. On any given day, there's two people working, right? Have you had any suspicious visitors here, say, in the last day or two? More specifically, somebody from out of town? Nah, just the usual business, Sheriff. Why? Somebody spray painted bridge or something? Now, Joan, <laughs> this is much more serious. No case the place. Jack Redfield got held up this morning with a knife to his throat by some slick woman and a punk wearing a mohawk. Now, are you sure you haven't seen anyone like that coming through? Uh, no. I mean, I checked in a young couple last night, but I, I believe they were on their honeymoon. I mean, they seemed innocent enough to me. Uh, no weird looking fellows, though. Well, where were they from? I believe they were from Colorado. Yeah, that's their car right over there, that truck there with the Colorado plates. You take the lead. Room number? 231 up top, second from the back there. Okay, right up here. Yes. Now don't go harassing my customers, Pat. You know I have a hard enough time keeping this place at capacity. Yeah, don't worry about it. We've got cops outside. Grab Harold and go into the bathroom. Harold! Harold! Go into the bathroom with Dallas! But I don't need to pee! And I don't want to go with Dallas watching me! Harold, go! Hey, Lisa, straighten yourself up and... be normal. We don't need room service, thanks. It's not room service, ma'am. This is Sheriff Pat Porter. Can you please open the door? Can you open the door, please? Oh, okay, uh, one sec. Oh, hi, Sheriff. Ma'am? Is there something wrong? No, no major problem here. Everything all right in here? It's great. It's good. Good. Good to hear. <laughs> good to hear. We're on our honeymoon. Um, Mike here was just about to jump in the shower. We shouldn't waste water, Dallas. Forget about the water! Congratulations. Listen, uh, sorry to bother you, miss, but... We had a uh, chemical leak just a few doors down here, and I wanted to come by just to tell you to stay inside, keep your door shut, your windows closed, and uh, stay away from the ventilation, and it should just be for a few hours. Oh, well, thank goodness. I thought there was a killer on the loose or something. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry about us, Sheriff. We don't plan on going anywhere for a while. Well, sounds like our Chamber of Commerce is doing a hell of a job. We're starting to get uh, some people coming here for their honeymoons now, huh? 
No, we're just staying over for the night. On our way to Vegas. Ah, Viva Las Vegas, huh? Well, all right then. Uh, listen, uh, enjoy your stay here. Uh, and uh, welcome to Bunch. <laughs> oh, we will, Sheriff. And by the way, lovely town you have here. Thank you, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Checking on the job from this morning. He doesn't know anything. He's just looking for a place to start. We can't assume that. All right, all right. Now that we're severely limited on time, let's focus. Lisa, my dear soon-to-be wifey, it's time we go shopping for engagement ring. Oh, really? Do you mean it? Will you be requiring my assistance? Now, stay here with Harold. Make sure neither of you leave this room. Dallas, I'm going to need your keys on this one. Got a short clutch now. Harold, where's that other joystick? Not losing your nerve, are you? No. Okay, you know how to do this quick in and out. Let's do this. Good. You please put that thing out. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. We are looking for engagement rings. Well, you've certainly come to the right place. It seems we have. So when's the big day? Well, we haven't quite set one up yet. Why don't we head over here, and we can start with a model for you first, and then we can customize from there. Sound good? Mm-hmm. A craftsman in the back today. Oh, my apologies. He's out today, but one of us could detail your order for him. Sounds good. Here's a lovely friend solitaire. Make yourself a statue! Stop! Ma'am. Sir, really hate to ruin your afternoon, but kind of in a rush to get married. Her father's on my ass to take her off his hands, and you know how in-laws can be, right? I just really need a ring right now. Well, this one would be perfect. <laughs> Actually, I'm real particular about my wedding, so in the light of all that, I'm just going to take a few options and decide later. Take what you want, really. We've got insurance, right? Right. We have a really nice policy from Insurance Haven down the street. If you ever need a... Enough! All of it goes in the bag. Now! Hurry! Do it. That one too. All of it. Now! Better move your ass. I'll take that, thank you very much. All right, now here's what's gonna happen next. Blondie, you're gonna lock the front door, and then we're all gonna take a field trip to the back room. Nice and easy. Come on. Five George K. Five George K. After all we've been through, we still don't know your name. I'm Kat. Mm. And I'm Joe. As in sloppy Joe? Uh, no. I'm not that sloppy. Yes, yes you are. I mean, look at you, you can't even match up a correct gig line. A gig what? A gig line. It's a military thing you wouldn't know. Oh my god, it's where your zipper, your belt, and your shirt buttons all line up together. Okay, enough. Can't thank you enough for your assistance. There were just so many choices, couldn't decide. Yeah, by the way, really lovely town you have here. Let's get out of here. This should change, sir.
When are they gonna be back? Soon enough. We're up to our hips in it. Say, talking about hips, I gotta call my wife. Nikita and I, I don't want to leave this here. Man, how can you be around normal people and still be so slow? I mean, it's almost like you're not just naturally stupid, but that you're working the stupidness. You know? Have you always been like that? I'm not stupid. My teachers always said I was special. Anybody ever say you're special? I bet they don't. Find a number of lockers there. Put it in one of them, and then we'll give the key to Brad McKay. You're right, Harold. They don't. Dad, who is this Brad McKay? A newspaper reporter. Lloyd Pearson said he was honest. The only man in this town who isn't afraid to face the truth. We've got to trust him. They're here. They're here. We come, baby. What did we get? Everything. There's a over a hundred thousand dollars worth of precious in here. Look at all of it. We got it all. Look, look, look. You want to see the car? No. No one saw or suspected a thing. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, what did they look like? Well, the guy was normal looking. Well, not that normal. I mean, he was really actually. <sighs> At any rate, I would have never have guessed it. Yes, and the woman, she was normal looking too. I didn't see it coming. So the guy didn't have a uh, spiky shaven head? Average looking man. Well, I wouldn't say average. Did anyone happen to mention any names or did they say where they came from or where they're going to? No, nothing of that sort. Oh, the lady did say that we had a lovely town. Did anyone see a car when they drove up? No. It's obvious to me that we're dealing with more than just two people here. One more thing. I did notice that the guy had deep brown eyes and a striking jawline. Really? Mm-hmm. And the woman? You know, I'm not that sure. Mm, my, my memory is a bit foggy on her. She was a redhead. I'm not sure if it was natural or not. Oh, but... it was not natural. What'd you say? Natural? <laughs> you mean natural. No, natural. You know, where the top matches the bottom. If it matches, then it's natural. She was not natural. All right. I'm going to have Johnny come by here and finish up here. Cat. Pull this guy down, will ya? <laughs> yes, Mrs. Ruby Goldstein, please. Hey, turn that down. Hello, this is Ruby. Uh, yes, Mrs. Goldstein. My name is Rutherford Rossberger. I'm a former associate of your late husband, Arthur Goldstein. My firm works out of Amarillo, Texas. Oh, well, what can I do for you, Mr. Rosberger? Well, Ruby, may I call you Ruby? Of course. Well, Ruby, my partner and I were working on an investment project on a 193 parcel pre-development area in the Sunny Hills area with Arthur right before his untimely passing. Are you familiar with this project? No, I don't recall. However, he was working on several things with a few people. Oh, yes, I wouldn't doubt that. He was a highly respected businessman in this part of the country. Ruby, our handle on this property is about to expire, and we were just inquiring if you would like to continue Arthur's hard work on this project and see it through before it ends up in the hands of some cold corporation that doesn't have any community interest in the Bunch Sunny Hills area. Does this interest you, Ruby? Why, this is the first I've heard of this. But I, uh, I am intrigued. That's great. Would you be able to set up just an informal meeting to talk about it? The expiration comes tomorrow at midnight, and uh, we happen to be in the area doing assessments on the property. So, you'd like to meet as soon as possible, then? Oh, yes. As a matter of fact, let me hand you to my associate, Patsy Silver. She's privy to the trip schedule. Sure. Sweet. 
Hi, Mrs. Goldstein. My name's Patsy Silver, but you can just call me Patsy. Uh, Rutherford here has briefed me on all the details, and I assume that you'd like to set up a meeting? Well, I didn't say that, but I am interested in learning more about this. Seeing as there seems to be a very immediate deadline at hand, and my assistant is about to leave for the evening, why don't you just come to my home? <laughs> that sounds wonderful, Mrs. Goldstein. Do you have a pen handy? Of course I do. All right, go ahead. Four five one one three Eagle Beak Trail, right here in Bunch. Would tonight at seven p.m. be all right with you and um? But Rutherford Rosberger. Rosberger. Rutherford Rosberger. Oh, Rutherford. Will this work for both of you? Why, <laughs> absolutely does. That sounds just perfect, Ruby. We'll see you then, okay? Bye-bye now. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> Hot damn, Eddie, you're a bona fide genius. So what's this old broad worth, anyway? Enough to make it our last job in this canker sore of a town. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the plan? We're a fake firm with fake deeds to a fake piece of real estate with fake credentials to cash a real check. I like it. So what's my job? To keep him in good company. Harold, our sunrise over the ocean is drawing near. I can help. What do I do? Nothing. Where's our sense cause we're sick and tired of a broken signal on the run. I keep feeling all my sins away. I can see them in a different day One is sister, you wanna ride And I feel she likes the cinnamon But she don't like the cinnamon It's the only one here So you see, Ruby, this is just the last step to save the bunch Sunny Hills area from the corporate wolves and lock in your financial security for even your great-grandchildren. With the added bonus of fulfilling Arthur's last dream project. Well, I have to say, it does sound good. Ruby, I've talked it over with the firm in Amarillo and with yours and Arthur's credentials and history. Well, they've allowed me to hold the sale for you with a small earnest deposit today. With a property sale of 6.3 on a potential value of over 45 million developed, a small check for 250,000 will put these parcels in its rightful hands.
Yeah, State Detective Stephen Morris, please. Yeah, tell him it's uh, Sheriff Pat Porter. Thank you. Hey, Steve, how's it going? Hey, Pat here. Uh, hey, how's Mary and the kids doing, by the way? Great, great. Hey, listen, uh, I've got some things going on uh, around here, and no, 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 uh -uh. nothing serious. Uh, just some petty nonsense, that's all. Well, I was wondering if any of your troopers may have uh, come across anything odd the past few days. Yeah, we're, we're looking for a car. I don't have a make, but uh, some autos uh, out of either Colorado or Oklahoma. I would appreciate it if you could. Yes, I would. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, I don't know. But I'm telling you this. Uh, oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, rush. Uh, but listen, not emergency rush. Uh, just a, a curious rush. Yep. Yep. Uh-huh. All right. Well, listen, if you hear of anything, give me a call, okay? I appreciate it. Okay, you got it, Steve. Thanks. All right, then. <laughs> mm. uh, who do I write this check out to? Mm. Uh, Harold Scoff Enterprises. Why, you could commemorate the lead in the road to the new estates and call it Arthur Goldstein Parkway. That does sound good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Stop by my office tomorrow, and we'll finalize this with my attorney. We'll be looking forward to it. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy the fresh air, Harold. This time tomorrow, the air will reek of seaweed and smog. It would definitely be worth it. And we'll be away from all these damn trains, too. Mm. Let's go, Harold. Gang, we did it. It was way too easy. So what happened? Did you kill her? Didn't have to. This is much cleaner. <laughs> we'll have cash in the morning before they even notice and have time to stop and retract. <laughs> so how much? $250,000. $250, a quarter of a million dollars to my fingertips! <laughs> can I hold it? Yes, you can, Harold. Please be careful with it. This, this has my name on it! That's just a cover account, Harold. We tried to cash that in my name, we wouldn't make it out of the bank. Yeah, remember like I told you. Is this enough to get to, to California Sunrise? Yes, it is, Harold. And more. <laughs> <laughs> and with the jewelry, we have over $350,000! Yeah. Okay, I say, I say, we celebrate our last night before paradise. Hmm? Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Woo! <laughs> okay, okay, guys, guys, listen. I want to know, what are you going to do after we get a place? <clears throat> I'm getting a new car, finally. A T-top Supra, black. Totally. That car is so choice. What about you, Dallas? I'm just going to relax and start a band. It'll be the hottest thing on the Sunset Strip. <laughs> <laughs> Boom! <laughs> and what about you, Harold? Hey, Harold, I know what you can do. You can get some contact lenses and ditch those nerdy glasses now. <laughs> <laughs> Harold, what the hell? He picks on me too much. Harold, it's it's okay, guys. It's okay. He'll he'll wake up and and be okay. <laughs> Are you stupid? <clears throat> 
Harold! What are you doing? What are you... Harold? 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 It's okay. I understand. They don't know how smart you really are. You know? Hey, we could go to the sunrise together. Just the two of us. No one has to know. I mean, I, I, I was just using Eddie to get to you. I always thought that you were the, the cuter one anyway. You know? You know, and just, it'll be our secret. Just the two of us, you know, sunrise together, and no one has to know. Nobody. We could just leave. Does that sound good? What do you say? Well, you all look bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, except for you, Dallas. You look a little drowsy. Hi. I apologize for your inability to speak right now. I learned a lot from you guys. Rags, rope, tape. No better way to keep someone quiet, right? Eddie. I'd like to take this time to personally thank you for the bank account you so graciously set up on my behalf. I knew sooner or later it'd be worth something. I know what you're thinking. Harold, I've known you my whole life and I always thought you were a retard. Well, I'm sure you can remember there was a time when I seemed what was normal, right? Then something changed. Right? Mommy and Daddy died. It affected him. He couldn't recover. He was never the same. Once I realized, hey, I don't have to do anything, there was no going back for me. A big idiot like myself doesn't have to do any dangerous labor jobs. He's not responsible for anything because he doesn't know any better. He doesn't have to worry about his grades because he's too special. 
Now that's living the life. Think about it. A big strong guy like myself, can you imagine the work I would have had to do with this body? I'd have been like a, a modern day John Henry or something. No thank you. Why would I give up the easy life when I could just let my big brother take care of me? And boy, did you take care of me. You set up a bank account for me and everything. The only problem was, is, is that you used me for that account and you kept all the money for yourself all these years. Why would I take a chance on trusting you with all of this when you couldn't even hold on to $15,000? You should have been able to control your friend better here, brother. Over a third of a million dollars split four ways. Well, that's, that's, that's $90,000. A third of a million dollars split one way, well that's <laughs> a third of a million dollars. It wasn't as hard as it would have seemed, acting oblivious to everything all these years. I just kept thinking about that special day when this would all work out for me, knowing that one day it would lead me here. You know what they say, Eddie, and I don't mind is the devil's playground. But these damn glasses, they've been killing my eyes. <sighs> Dallas, you did a great job mm -hmm. of spending all that money while Eddie was put away. I bet you wish now you could have put some of that money from your last job into the Harold Scuff Enterprises account, don't you? Eddie, you trust this loser over your own brother? <clears throat> Dallas, for you, it's not really about the money. I just never liked you that much. You bullied me, you put me down. I really didn't appreciate that. You know, you know where I'm coming from! I knew once Dallas started talking about a big plan to make some big money, once Eddie got out with Lisa's help, this was going to be good. All I had to do was hold on for just a few more days. And since I can't be trusted for fear of screwing things up, I didn't have to take any chances, ever. I didn't have to do any of the dirt you guys did. Nobody even knows Harold in this town. I don't even exist here. Oh, Lisa. Lisa. I don't particularly dislike you. It's just that you're in the wrong place, running with the wrong people at a very, very wrong time. I mean, I can't go through life with you holding this over my head now, can I? I am, however, flattered that you used Eddie to get to me. Maybe things could have worked out for us in another time.
yaptı. Don't you think it's kind of funny that somebody who's incapable of reading and writing that well can write like this? It's almost like a miracle come to life. No handwriting on file to compare it to. You know the craziest thing is, is that you guys are so stupid. You guys actually thought the sun rose over California. Don't you know that the sun rises in the east and sets in the west? Dallas, 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 Dallas. You can barely keep your eyes open, buddy. I know it's a weird feeling at all. At first it feels hot, and then it feels cold. You don't know if it's blood or sweat. Just go to sleep. Just go to sleep. Go to sleep, little baby. Lisa. Did you really think you were gonna go off and live a perfect life with a guy like this? You saw yourself riding around the Pacific Coast Highway in a Supra? Lisa. He's a convicted felon. He doesn't even have a license, Lisa. You know, it's girls like you that make guys like this. I don't like guys like this! Eddie? I know this is a lot for you to take in and all, brother. But I just need to be independent right now. You can understand that, right? I really wish you hadn't taken advantage of me over all those years, Eddie. I know you were gonna get me to the sunrise over the ocean and everything. And that was good and all. But you would have kept the money for yourself! After getting Lisa and Dallas their share. And I wouldn't have seen any of that. And I just couldn't stand for that. No $358,000 on the line. <laughs> well, I guess this is it. It's been a good run. But I'll get that Supra and I'll drive it proudly in your memory. Eddie, I really wish you wouldn't look at me like that. <laughs> it's heartbreaking. <laughs> Oh! <laughs>
I'm going in. You stay back here. It's awfully early. Oh, my God. Pat? Joan, go back to the office. What is it, Pat? What's going Just on? Just go back to the office. Get Johnny and Ray now. Damn it, Sheriff. I have a right to know what's going on in my hotel. You'll know soon enough. What the... Sheriff Porter, these are your guys. It is unknown to us who this gang is that raped our town as they have no identification. As well, there is little doubt that they will be missed by anyone. They blamed their leadership on a big stranger that they claimed to have disposed of along the way. We do not know the whereabouts of his body, if indeed he did exist. We do not want this trial. Federals invading our town, bad light shed on our community, or God forbid, the prospect of a possible not guilty find. As so, we did what we had to do. We believe that it is in the best interest of everyone in Bunch to move on without further question. Otherwise, our town will never be the same for us and our children. I write this on behalf of the town of Bunch along with those who helped me rid our town of this evil cancer. Damn. Collectively yours, the concerned citizens of Bunch. We believe that a smart sheriff like yourself will do just fine in the upcoming elections. Damn. I don't know who's worse. These people? Or those people? Into a way 
Where are you headed? California. Hop in. Yeah.